Welcome to EG's second screencast on grid computing brought to you by the direct user support team. In today's lesson we are going to review credential management, forms and my proxy services. So before going any deeper with credential management let us briefly review the certification procedure cycle. Initially the user creates a public and private key pair. He then sends his public key to the certification authority and goes through an identity vetting procedure with the registration authority. Once this procedure has successfully finished, the public key of the user is signed with the private key of the certification authority and thus a public certificate is produced. In the end, the user is left with the private key and the public certificate. These two files should reside with appropriate file names and privileges under the user's home account on the user interface. To log into the user interface, I will use the PuTTY client we briefly discussed during the last screencast. So, let me broaden this window. So, type in my username and my account password. So, now I'm inside the user interface. The private key and the public certificate should reside under the directory .globus. So, as you can see, there are two files here. One is named usercert.pem, which is the public certificate, and the other one is named userkey.pem. Notice that this file, which is the private key, has read and write privileges only for me. So, just briefly a few OpenSSL commands that are used in order to view the contents of these two files. First I will deal with the certificate. I want to see the subject and the dates relevant to the certificate and also its modulus. This is the complete command, just hit enter and as you can see the subject of the certificate is country name, organization name, organizational unit and then a few other things related to my personal identity. As you can see I am using just one dummy or demo certificate. Next two lines are the validity dates of my certificate not before and not after, so not before usually is the date and time that my certificate was signed and not after is the expiration date of my certificate. Now the modulus is not a very interesting uh, piece of information, however it is used to see if my public certificate pairs with my private key. This is useful in the case that I have just rekeyed and I want to see that I have transferred both files correctly on the UI. So, in any case, this is the command I will use in order to get the modulus out of the private key and as you can see now, the private key is encrypted which means I need to enter a passphrase in order to decrypt its contents and then print out the modulus on the screen. So provided the passphrase and this is the modulus of the private key and now I can see if these two uh, files match one another. Now, in order to authenticate ourselves to the grid infrastructure we do not directly use our private key and public certificate. Instead, we use those two files to generate proxy certificates which have a much shorter validity. On the user interface, this is performed using the grid proxy init command. Notice that one has to provide the private passphrase after the command is issued. Now, in order to view the contents of the short term proxy certificate, the grid proxy info command is used. Notice on the time left line that by default the validity of the proxy certificate is 12 hours. Even if this proxy certificate is enough to authenticate myself to the grid infrastructure, 
it is still not enough to run jobs on the grid. To do that, I need to gain authorization, and this is done via the VOM service. Before discussing the VOM service, let us briefly review the virtual organization registration procedure just to gain a better insight. Initially, the user requests registration with the virtual organization, usually via a web form. The virtual organization administrator then processes that request and either accepts or rejects that request. If the administrator decides to accept the request, the user's subject DN is inserted into the VOMS database. As a last step, the user is notified upon registration. The VOMS service is used for user authorization on the grid level. Thus, using the VOMS proxy init command, the necessary VOMS extensions are appended to the user's proxy certificate. Using this certificate bundle, the user is authenticated and authorized to access grid resources, which in effect means he or she is now able to use the grid services. So, returning to the command line, notice that when I use the VOMS proxy init command, I also use the minus VOMS flag to define the name of the VO that I am registered with. In my case, this is the HG demo VO. Once again, notice that the private passphrase of the private key is requested. To view the contents of the certificate bundle, I must use the VOMS proxy info command using the minus all flag. Notice that the first section of the result refers to my regular grid proxy, while the second one refers to the VOMS extensions. The validity time for both is once again by default 12 hours. The last thing we will be discussing is the My Proxy service. Using this service, a user is able to submit jobs that will last longer than the default 12 hour limit given by the short term proxies. Using the My Proxy init command, a long term proxy is created and directly stored on the My Proxy service. From then on, an automated renewal mechanism of short-term proxies may be issued so that running jobs do not get disrupted and aborted by proxy limitations. When issuing the myProxy init command, I will also use the minus "-d", and minus "-n", flags. The minus "-d", flag instructs the myProxy service to use my subject DN as username, whereas the minus "-n", flag is used so that renewal of short-term proxies may be performed without a passphrase. Once again, I have to provide the private passphrase of the private key. As you can see, by default, the validity of the long-term proxy is 7 days. To view the contents of the long-term proxy stored on the MyProxy service, I use the MyProxy info command. Once again, and in the same context as earlier, I also use the minus D flag. As you can see, the username associated with my long-term proxy stored on the my proxy service is my subject DN. Also notice that the time left for this long-term proxy is 7 days. During the next screencast, we will see how all these things we shortly discussed come together when we submit our first job to the grid. Until then, on behalf of the Direct User Support Team, thank you for watching.